Um, my function is to kind of uh, to react to uh, what we've we've heard and and following my uh, reactions or responding responding to um, Father Sweeney and, and uh, Dr. Hittinger is is, um, is there is there time for questions or something? Oh, I see. Okay, great, good. Um, I, I guess uh, I'm going to respond by uh, sharing a couple of. Uh, a few anecdotes uh, and general reflections. And I've been, um, see, a, a bishop for 18 years. I've been a priest for 36, 37 years, something like that. And um, uh, in, in this issue or of, of how um, the relationship of clergy and, and laity is something that's it's been very much at the heart of, of um, my own ministry as a priest, and and um, and some of that really happened by accident. And um, I, as was mentioned, I had uh, the opportunity early on to go and study uh, social work at uh, at uh, the University of uh, Columbia University in New York City, and uh, it was a great experience. And I came back from there, and and. Um, and started working for Catholic Charities right away. I had only been a priest for a couple of years, and so I had only worked in a parish uh, environment, parish structure, for a couple of years before I was taken out of that, and then worked in a, a nonprofit corporation, Catholic Charities, with a board of directors, mostly lay, and and that and I was a director, a staff person. <laughs> Uh, uh, underneath this board of directors, and the, yes, I was a priest, and there was this certain deference to, you know, Father Soto and all that. But still, it was, um, it was, it, it was a, um, it, it was a, a lay-run organization by and large. And, and I mean, Bishop Johnson did have obviously a great deal of influence, and Monsignor Michael Driscoll, who then later became uh, Bishop Driscoll. Uh, had a great deal of influence, but it was it, I, I, early on in my priesthood. I got this experience of of um, a different way of governing. That was not the traditional parish pastor, uh, parish council thing, and um, and and it had a uh, significant influence on me. And and then besides that. Um, uh, Bishop Johnson, who was uh, the first Bishop of Orange and, um, and was the one responsible for sending me away to get a master's in social work, and, and Monsignor Driscoll, then, you know, they had, there were all these, at, at the time, there were different boards and, and um, other organizations that wanted a priest on their board. And, and so over the course of uh, the years that I was in Orange, uh, I, I served on the United Way board. I served on the board of the Boy Scouts Council, the Boy Scouts of America. Served on the board of the Girl Scouts of uh, Girl Scout Council. Uh, was part of um, Legal Aid Society, um, uh, the Red Cross, and uh, there was a few other organizations that. And, and, and so a lot of my, and, and, and I gave a significant amount of time to my participation on these boards. And, and I guess the, and my point is, is that that experience uh, had, uh, I was, began to teach me how, to, how do I exercise my ministry or my role as a priest in a, in, in not necessarily in a hierarchical uh, structure, but you know that here I was, um, one vote among others, and how could I be as influential as I could, as a as a priest, in in that situation to bring the rest of the board along with me, you know, and how and and how how could I politic, um, you know, a board on different issues and and uh, negotiate and and to, and and part of the reason why. Uh, Bishop Johnson and and, and also uh, Michael Driscoll wanted me on these boards was to try to keep them from going renegade, you know, uh, from getting too far off the, the where all of a sudden Catholics could not participate on some of these organizations. And, uh, and I'll, I'll, I guess I'll 
maybe give a, a, a real clear-cut example, like the work that I did on United Way and, or the presence there also um, helped to keep uh, Planned Parenthood off of one of the funding agencies of United Way, which would have then become have problematic for Catholics giving to United Way. And, and so it was, um, and again, this was back in the 80s, 90s. And, um, but my, my point is, is that uh, I learned a lot from that experience and, 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 it's, and it's influenced my own work as a bishop today of the confidence and trust that I do have in trying to, um, in, in seeing how do we, how do I as bishop and then, and how do we as a church uh, involve uh, lay men and women in the, um, more intricately in the, uh, in some, addressing some of the issues that Father Michael Sweeney pointed out of, um, of that co-responsibility piece and that that's, um, that that is, uh, and, and I, and in my conversations with priests about this, my brother priests in Sacramento, and then also, and I'll be candid, my conversation with brother bishops about some of the things that I try to do and why I, I do it that way, is, uh, you know, met with a certain that uh, um, hesitancy or reservation, mostly because they don't, they've never experienced another model. You know, they've never had to make decisions in another context. And, um, and, and, I, and again, I was afforded the opportunity to see how it was possible to, um, to exercise influence and, and also uh, leadership that didn't necessarily you know, require uh, me to be the pastor of a, of a, of a place and, and uh, that you know, I'm, I'm the one in charge. And, and, uh, uh, and, and I... And, and so I think there is room for a lot of conversation and discussion about that. The other thing that, um, and I, I, I was um, um, taken by the whole uh, discussion about the, uh, the French Revolution and, 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 and the impact that that had uh, in, the, in what has happened to the church. Uh, I think that... Um, the American church experience is related to that and also has its own kind of story about that. And I, um, and, and, and I think that um, uh, one of the things that came out of that, which, which uh, and, and mostly as a result of women religious um, following the French Revolution, uh, was the... Uh, you know the the growth of of Catholic hospitals, uh, Catholic schools, uh, Catholic social services, where uh, where the clergy uh, were in a certain sense kind of penned in, you know, and, and maybe in some sense to protect ourselves institutionally and in other ways, uh, religious women religious congregations, uh, which um, were religious and yet also in some sense where there was a, a lay character to that as well, were involved in the world in, in forming these, um, and, and, uh, and now moving over to, the, to uh, the United States, you know, an incredible network of hospitals, schools, social services, and other institutions that had a major impact in, uh, in, in not only for the church and for the immigrant church that was settling in the United States, but really transformed um, American life in general. And, and so, um, and we are still formidable institutions today. Um, and, and that that also, um, as, as we think about the church and the work of the church, that that is, a, for us here in the United States, is a significant accomplishment of creating these uh, corporate structures that continue the, um, uh, the corporal works of mercy um, in, a, in, in, in a really af effective way. Now, do we have challenges with regards to Catholic identity? Absolutely. But in some sense, particularly I'll, I'll point to Catholic universities um, where um, 
that that it's a big question, and and some of us lament that you know how that that's not being done well in some schools, but yet, you know, institutions like um, USC or even Chapman University, and uh, I guess I'm pulling from uh, Southern California examples, you know, that those started out as as religious universities. You know, they had a religious purpose. Nobody would even think of associating Chapman or USC to its religious mission. And yet we still struggle with many of our Catholic universities over that issue. And the fact that that debate goes on uh, is at some point to our success, but also to the challenges that we still have going forward. But all of these institutions, particularly since the, the Second Vatican Council and, and some of the, a lot of the other issues that have happened, have um, moved more and more towards um, you know, uh, lay boards and, and, and lay governance and, uh, and with also still a connection to the church. And we do have to, is that, do I have 10 minutes left? Oh, I see, okay. And so that I think that we, um, that there are some opportunities there that um, we need to, uh, opportunities and challenges that we need to look at. I, and I'll, I'll say that in Sacramento, um, I've tried to, um, uh, to not only to try to be more vigorous with regards to that in, in the area of Catholic charities, um, but also in, in how we do Catholic education today. I, I just, uh, you know, I'm, I, I think there's good theological and uh, uh, reasons why um, lay uh, people need to take a more active role in leadership in, in Catholic education. Uh, but I also have the very practical thing, I just don't have the bench, you know, of guys who can, of a pastor who knows even what to do with a Catholic school. And, um, and so, so those are, uh, I think that there are, are uh, w we do have to, um, I have to um, look at how do I exercise my ministry in a way that is more co-responsible and also accountable. Um, Dr. Hittinger, did I, am I saying that? Per, per, yeah, okay. Um, refer to 2002 and 2018 and um, very, and you know, these, those are, were and are very difficult moments in the church. Um, and one hates to see change come out of those kinds of experiences. Uh, we'd like to think that we would change more readily or, or you know, adapt, you know, on our own um, desire to want to adapt and renew and respond. And un unfortunately, that's, that, um, that uh, you know that isn't always the case, and and we are dealing with a very difficult moment right now, and it does, um, and 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 there is a lot of um, self-examination going on among the the bishops uh, as to, I, I I mean we feel, I feel we feel the um, uh, the responsibility the. the um, the, de the demand, I'll use that word, and, uh, and the responsibility to be more transparent and more accountable, and, and how do, how, what, what's, what's the way to do that uh, with integrity? And not just f uh, abdicate or forfeit to um, a corporate business models. And I, I think that, um, well, we can discuss that later. I wanna close with one thing, and that has to do with um, uh, and this may sound a little bit nostalgic, but uh, you know, I um, you know, I I think the, the the parish, particularly in the United States, um, at one time was and the, there was a kind of an integrity or an inter, there was an uh, an integrated sense of life in uh, in in a parish. Maybe those were immigrant parishes, and um, uh, that doesn't exist today. And 
and you know, Dr. Ettinger made a point to how this certain kind of fragmentation has gone on between the secular and the sacred. And, and so we, you know, uh, so we've just become concerned with the care of souls. Um, but yet, there, I, I think that there, um, you know, a, a thriving, you know, it's my contention that a thriving parish uh, uh, can create a thriving community, neighborhood, and that a thriving a neighborhood can also lend to a, a thriving parish if the parish is willing to be part of the neighborhood. Uh, I, I, I say that because I think also um, um, in, in the context of, of our current uh, political malaise going on with a uh, with the government shutdown just recently ended, but who knows, we might be back in it again in a couple of weeks, that there's, uh, I, I think that there's, there's, um, uh, there's a good reason for us. Uh, we, we, dom politics and social life has gotten dominated by this national scene. And, um, and the a fact that things can, you know, the, the old uh, political adage that all politics is local, uh, I, I don't think we, you know, we've kind of lost that. And that there's, and, um, uh, and I think parish life, a vibrant parish life with a in vibrant, engaged laity, um, living in community can, uh, uh, can do a lot, not just for, um, for revitalizing the church, but even revitalizing uh, what uh, public life and democracy could be in our country. So I'll stop there. <laughs>